Wow. All right, let's talk about Mr. Hogan's golf swing. Uh, this is really, really cool for me. I've obviously been obsessed with Mr. Hogan's golf swing. And I've only made one video where I talk about the left shoulder, where I really break down and analyze Mr. Hogan's golf swing. And there's a really important reason why I never did that. And the biggest reason why is because I couldn't actually do it. There's very, very few people on the internet that talk about Mr. Hogan that can actually do something that looks pretty similar or has the hallmarks of the leverage and action that Mr. Hogan created. My uh, inspiration was Mike Maves, quite honestly. Um, and uh, I'm so happy that I became friends with him through the internet and through YouTube. But he was the first guy that I saw that it, he doesn't look exactly like Mr. Hogan, but he's doing what Mr. Hogan was doing in his style. And that was my inspiration. I was like, why can't I do that? I should be able to do that. So let's take a look at Mr. Hogan's golf swing. So here it is. And uh, it's the most beautiful golf swing. And this is one of the most famous shots ever. Uh, it's nice on steady sticks here from the Shell's Wonderful World of Golf, where Mr. Hogan, I believe he shot three under par, and he hit 18 fairways and 18 greens. I guess it's 14 fairways and 18 greens, but he hit everything. And Gene Sarazen said it was the best golf he'd ever seen. Um, apparently, it was a very tough round of golf. But let's take a look at this. Now, what I've done here is I see people put lines all over the place, and and I get it, and I understand it, but it's very, very hard to talk about a four-dimensional golf swing in two dimensions. And whenever you look at a video, you're looking at two dimensions. And uh, the third dimension is depth, and the fourth dimension is time. And the reason why the fourth dimension is so important is because every single frame, every single moment of the golf swing, the planes are changing. So... You just have to think about that. But as I look at this golf swing, um, what I really like is he stays inside this letter A uh, all the way around his backswing. So this is where I started my swing evolution, was getting this backswing down. And I worked really, really hard on mostly plain. That's what the thing I think most people recognize me for was because I was swinging kind of flat. But there's so much more to this than that. I mean, it's really just a work of art. But let's talk about Mr. Hogan's left leg right here, down the left side of the letter A. What I see is that his center of gravity doesn't really move off the ball very much. Right here, I'd say we get a little move off the ball just into that right foot, inside right foot, and into the right heel. And he turns around that right leg like it's a post. So that's very important, is we're just going to roll around that right hip as a post. And he keeps it in that same spot. And what he used to do was put a golf club right up along this side of his leg, where this bar of the letter A is, and he would rotate around that golf club just to know that he was staying in the right space. Now, one of the things that I think is so beautiful is you'll see this left shoulder here. It's a good ways away from the side of the letter A, and... Uh, but it's very symmetrical. As you see it go back around here, his backbone stays right on the left side of this letter A. It's just like he's just built right into it. And uh, that's something I did wrong for a long time. There's a little bit of an angle, little spine angle here. I had been getting too stacky and staying over here on my left side. But Mr. Hogan moves off the ball. And uh, if we look at his head... You can see it come off probably an inch, two inches 
as he gets into his transition. Now look how loaded he is here. This is just so cool. He's inside his A. His head hasn't moved too much, just a little bit of rotation around the spine and to get those shoulders around. His left knee is kicked in nicely, and all his weight is basically deep and into that right hip. So as we see him start to make his transition, which is so important, watch the move of the body off. But his head comes back to the same place that it was when we basically started. Everything goes left. The head stabilizes around a pivot point. And look at that body just turn, turn, turn. And this is where I would get stuck. People would say, Chris, you look just like Ben Hogan up to this point. And then you don't look like him. Um, a major reason is I'd pop off of my right heel but Mr. Hogan stays down nice and through. Um, but I wasn't clearing my left side, and I didn't understand how. And for me, it actually, the answer came from the handle. I needed to pull up with my left hand on the handle to get me to clear my left side of the body out of the way. So you see Mr. Hogan do it very nicely here. And he supinates and pronates his arms, and he keeps that left elbow folding up against his body. This is the big difference that very few people have today. Here the left elbow is far off the body. Here the left elbow is glued to the body. And he throws that right hand like he's throwing a ball or throwing a punch. If you're throwing a punch, you turn that right hand over as you deliver the punch. And here is the karate chop move, right palm up and boom, that palm goes over. That's supination and release. That's what gave me my speed, um, that last final gear that I was missing in my golf swing. But another thing to notice is, look how beautifully his hips have moved off the ball and through the letter A. They're leading the charge. The hips lead the charge. And uh, if you notice that right hip, is ahead of that right shoulder. That right shoulder is still way outside the A as he stabilizes for the hit. Bam! Bam! Right through there. And I feel it's so important that you work that handle properly with a push-pull and you get that right knee running at the ball. Look at that right knee and right hip, the right femur going down through that ball with a supination and roll. The head just naturally comes up in balance. This is the greatest golf swing that has ever been produced by man. And for a small man who struggled and didn't win a major until he was 34, to wind up with nine majors and 64 wins, he won six of nine majors after a major car accident. This is the greatest golf swing that has ever been produced by man. And uh, he carved it out of the stone like Michelangelo. And that's why he's my idol. And uh, that's my analysis of the Ben Hogan golf swing. So I really encourage you to go check out myswingevolution.com. And uh, that's where I have my video, The Hogan Code, uh, where I talk about my journey to learn to swing like Mr. Hogan and all the fruits and benefits that it brought to my life. So hit them long and hit them straight.